Okay, so check it out. I generated some uh, fun uh, point simulation type stuff over in uh, Houdini, and I'm playing it back over here in uh, Unity using the uh, VFX graph. Ah, uh, so cool. Let's uh, let's check out how that works. So this is on the, uh, the Houdini side. You can see uh, this is a pretty simple graph. Like um, this uh, this first part here. This is just doing a simulation just for the uh, for the sake of, so you can see what's going on uh, I've got a, a sphere over here that um, we basically just move around you know like just put some noise on it uh, and then over here we uh, got a bigger version of our sphere we scatter some points onto it randomize the p scale just the color yada 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 we do the uh, vellum constraint uh, for grains, and then the solver for uh, running it, and then I'm just adding a sprite with the uh, with the uh, sphere uh, picture on it, so that we can kind of see what we're working with here. So if we run that, uh, you'll see we we just get a, a nice little simulation, real basic, but you know something to look at, right? Okay, cool. So from there. Uh, we basically output uh, point caches uh, using um, some of Unity's uh, stuff, right? So uh, over here at this GitHub page for uh, Unity Technologies, we've got the VFX toolbox. And in there, specifically inside the DCC tools, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. Uh, if we get down to Houdini uh, 19.5 here, OTLs, I should say that I'm using Houdini 20.5 and it still works fine. But this HDA right here, that's got that's got our fun in it. It's got a few different things in it, but specifically it's got a point cache. Uh, and what that does is it lets you take in um, just point uh, information along with uh, hypothetically extra attributes that you want to uh, put in there. <coughs> And it uh, lets you just spit it out into a, uh, a pcache file that you can use over in uh, Unity. Uh, so what I've done here uh, is I've got my, my whole simulation here, but I want all the points like over the course of the, uh, the whole uh, animation. So what I've done here is I've added an attribute for just the current frame and then I'm adding a trail uh, sop, which is something to look at, but basically it is, uh, the trail length is set to F end, which is the length of the, uh, the clip here. So what we end up with, if we look at our uh, geometry spreadsheet here, is um, a single point. For every point, we have every point in time for it basically, you know? So we have it at frame one and frame two and frame three and frame four and so on and so forth. Um, I did add this uh, sort here, uh, sorting by frame, just so that you, it puts the um, the frames in order. So the early frames, you know, like frame zero or frame one or whatever, happens at the beginning as opposed to the end because by default, the trail stop will just take the current geometry and then uh, successively put the uh, the previous frames uh, f further and further down in the list so really all I want to do is just get it back in order so it, I can play it back easier um, so okay, let's see Hold on, I accidentally uh, cooked the uh, the stop here because I had the spreadsheet open so we'll close that uh, but this point cache here uh, you can see, you can set it to export, you can spit, pick your uh, file, and by default it's just going to export, um, or rather for here I've just got it exporting uh, position, which it's using the recommended property names, it's going to rename it to position, uh, which is fine. But you'll see I've got, I've got two point caches. One is, this is the big one, this has all of the, uh, the time information, so you can see <coughs> where the point is at every step of the way. And then this one's just got a little bit of extra information like the uh, the P scale and the uh, the color attributes just so that we don't have to write it out to 
for every single frame. We just want it for one. That way we don't um, increase our memory footprint and all that. Okay, cool. So now that we've got that, let's uh, flip over into uh, Unity here. And we'll look at look at our file here. So, like I said, this is using the VFX graph. Uh, so, specifically, I outputted sim and sim info. Uh, so sim has got all of the points in there. Um, I scattered a thousand points, and it's going over two hundred forty uh, frames. So you can see two hundred forty thousand points. The uh, sim info, on the other hand, just has just the thousand points. Uh, so we have got a very minimal graph here. Uh, we're just spawning a single burst, and we're spawning in the number of uh, points that we have. Um, we're initializing the particle, and then the big, the, the fun thing here is we have this sample point cache node here, and we can assign a uh, NASA to it, so sim or sim info, and you can see we get our properties. So so long as we know which index that we're interested in. We can uh, pull that out and use it to set things like our size and our color. So uh, the update here is like really the uh, the main thrust of this, and really all it is is this is just some math to find uh, the the index to the uh, to the point. So basically, we use the uh, the age of the particle. Uh, you know, which is just is a, an incremental value so that we can multiply that against our frame rate and then modulo, do a modulo so that uh, we just loop over our frame count, turn it into an integer, um, and then this stuff here is just for uh, figuring out how many points are in there. Um, so we got that. And then the basically the idea here is that if we've got a thousand points at frame one, we'll have all thousand points, and frame two has got a thousand points, but this point cache has them all in it. So the index is basically if you're the first point in the first frame, you're looking for uh, point zero, and in the next frame, you're looking for point one thousand, and in the second frame, it'll be point two thousand, so on and so forth. So. Likewise, if you're looking for the third point in uh, the first frame, it'd be, you know, say, uh, index 2. And then uh, the next frame, you just add 1,000, so you'd be at index 1,002, and, you know, so on and so forth. So you can, you can look at uh, this graph and kind of see what's going on. Uh, but that's really the whole thing is we're just finding the, uh, the index to the point in there. And then using that, we just spit that out into our update over here. And, and that's it, that's the whole thing. Uh, the nice thing here though, is because we're working inside the, uh, the VFX graph, we can do other uh, stuff on top of this. So for instance here, I set up some uh, jazz just to uh, add some curl noise to the, uh, the position. So just to take a look at that real quick. Let it recompile the shader. So here you can see it still has the simulation going, but now I'm adding a, a layer of noise on top of it, uh, which is kind of fun. So this part, at this point now, we're, we're working in a, a real-time engine in a real-time context, and we can respond to the user you know, so we can make interactive things to change things like, you know, the frequency or, or whatever you want to do. But the notion here is that we can do the complex cooking over in Houdini, make our make our stuff go, and then we can add on some, you know, low, uh, low computational stuff into it. But yeah, that's the uh, that's the gist. Just wanted to show it. And I'll talk to you guys later.